Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is Minister M.L. Kimball here coming to you with the Kingdom Followers Yahusha Hamashiach. Uh, I am going to shoot a quick video tonight. Um, uh, a, a guy inboxed me and he said, uh, could I give him some advice uh, about marriage? And I said, listen, I can't give you no advice. I, ain't got to, I don't have a perfect marriage. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. So the reality is I can't give you any advice. I can all I can do is take you to the book. Now, if you disagree with the book and you don't want to talk about that, then that's between you and Yahuwah. But the reality is, again, I'm not going to ever put my two cents on something because that's been going on for years in the churches. And instead of us opening up the scriptures and seeing what does say of the scriptures, we go based on what somebody told us, some Joe Schmo told us, and then we don't ever search out the scriptures for ourselves. So when I started getting serious about this thing probably two, three years ago, I, I really wanted to read and spend time in the scriptures and read everything that was taught to me to make sure that I had it right. And so, with that being said, um, I, I found out some things that was not taught completely the, the right way. And so today, uh, in response, I'm going I'm, I'm to keep the name, his name anonymous, uh, just out of protection. I don't, I, I'm not going to do that, because uh, this is not about putting anybody's business out there. But he did ask me uh, to give him some scriptures that he could utilize for his marriage, because his marriage is going through it. And so, all I'm going to do is go to the Bible. So, what we're going to do is, get your Bibles out. I'm going to keep you in the New Testament. And today, we're not going to look at no books that you don't know nothing about. We are going to stay in the books that all of you all are comfortable with. Uh, so, the very first uh, scripture I'm going to take you to tonight. First of all, like the video, share the video, and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are growing daily. We are getting people subscribing daily. We've got 50 pages on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on LinkedIn. We're on TikTok. And you can also find us online at www.kns-ministries.org. And you can find all of the information that we talk about, all of the things that we, we try to upload, everything that we discuss and study. Uh, on the website, so that way anybody who wants to take a look and read this stuff, they can see it all in one place. So please, please, please like the video, share the video, and do subscribe. Let's go to work. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 says, Honor Christ and put others first. A wife should put her husband first. As she does the Lord. A husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head and the Savior of the church, which is his own body. Wives should always put their husbands first as the church puts Christ first. That is not Minister Kimball's words. So why, wives, why y'all getting upset because I said it? I put it in a different translation because none of y'all like the word submit. So since y'all don't like the word submit, we're going to go over here to another word that babies it up for you. But we're looking at the scripture. So I didn't say it. You get upset with God about it. Don't come to me and say, well, I think it's this and I think it's this. And. No, this is what the scripture says. Stop trying to dress things up to make it comfortable for you. It's not about you. It's what God's will is and what does the scripture say, and that is how we are supposed to live our lives. Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 says, A wife must put her husband first. There it is again, ladies. This is her duty as a follower of the Lord. So uh, listen, if you ain't following, if you ain't putting your husband first, ladies, guess what? The Bible says that's your duty. It's not about if you feel like it, you want to, how you feel today. Did he ring your bell today? Was he the cat's meow today and the dog's the bow wow today? None of that matters according to the Yahuwah. He says it's your duty. 
Then he says a husband must love his wife and not abuse her. So you don't get to abuse your wife. That means physically, emotionally. I used to be a very abusive man. Not physical, but because I was raised in a house with a mom that she could not, she felt like that was the only way to control the situation was by to just letting that tongue say whatever. And so I grew up in an atmosphere where you got the tongue pulled out on you on any reason she felt like, and that was just the way it was. I'm not here to bash my mother. It's just the truth about the matter. Those of you that know Cindy Purdue, you know every other word came out of her mouth was something harsh, when she, especially when she was upset. And so me as a young boy growing up in that type of atmosphere, a single mother, then, you know, a young boy gravitates to what atmosphere he's in. So I'm not making no excuses or justifying what I used to be because what I used to be, I'm no longer today. That's the reason why I can talk to you today. And that's the reason why I shoot these videos because somebody is hearing me. Somebody is changing their life based upon the scriptures that we're going over. So the ones that don't got nothing to say or don't want to hear it, fine, die and go to hell. The reality is this. The Bible says only few will make it to heaven. And the reality is there's people that's thinking they're going, and they're going to wake up in hell. What would you do if he cracked the sky tonight? What would you do if he called your ticket when you went to bed tonight? Are you prepared to meet him in the air? That is the question. And the reality is, you only are the person that can answer that. 1 Peter 3 and 7 says, If you are a husband, okay, we on the man now, you should be thoughtful of your wife. I think about my wife all the time. I do. I, I, I can honestly tell you I do. Is it always a good thing? No. I'm not here. Like I said, Paul said we die daily. And the person that can be healed and can be delivered from his transgression is the person that can first acknowledge his transgression. So you cannot walk through life thinking that you don't make no mistakes. You don't have to be corrected. The Bible's correcting both the husband and the wife here. So I don't know where women get off thinking that this is only about the husbands. You have a duty too. I was talking to a gentleman today. I told him that he needs to tell his ungrateful wife that wants to divorce him that she has a duty. And if she don't want to keep up and keep up her into the bargain, well, guess what? You can't make her stay. But the reality is, as long as you stay faithful to God and you stay in your place, then what's that can be re, uh, rekindled. He, he can give you some, something completely different. But you got to get out the way. And that's the reality. So when it comes down to it, we got to be able to admit when we're wrong. Husbands and wives. I didn't come down here to play. He said he wanted something for both husband and wives. So guess what? We going down husband and wife lane tonight. You get offended by it. Don't know what to tell you. 1 Peter 3 and 5 says, Long ago, those women who worshipped Yahuwah and put their hope in him made themselves beautiful by putting their husbands first. Wait a minute. Hold on. Stop. Wait a second. So all the fake hair you're putting in your head, all the fake makeup and paint and stuff you're stuffing in your clothes, you might think you're beautiful. But according to what we just read, the scripture says that you are ugly, no matter how you think you look, if you don't respect your husband by putting him first. Sorry, wives, that's on y'all. I don't know what to tell you. I ain't, I ain't picking and choosing. We just going through them all. First uh, Peter 3, 1 through 4 says, if you are a wife, you must put your husband first. So wait a minute, he didn't say, do I want to? Oh, no, 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 no. He didn't say, put the job before. No, 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 no. He didn't say, put the kids before. 
He didn't say put the neighbors before. He didn't say put your clothes before. He didn't say put TV before. He said you must. If you don't like it, I didn't write it. Even if he opposes to our message. So that that that's, that takes you women out uh, that, are, that are upset because your, your husband don't want to follow you at the church that you're going to, which is probably a scam anyway. So he probably can see right through it because these churches today, most of them spend so much time focusing on destroying the black man and then they turn around and they feminize the black man. So that's why the black men are not in our churches. You go to church, study it out for yourself. They ain't in there because they're getting tired of being preached down on while a woman with five baby, baby uh, babies out of wedlock can sit on the front pew and won't nobody say nothing because she's bringing an offering every Sunday. It's sick. The Bible said the whole head is sick. So he says, if, even if he opposes our message, you will win him over by what you do. So all this, we can't both be pushing. We both can't be arguing. One's got to be the arguer, and one's got to be the one that lets back. And according to the Bible, uh, Yahuwah puts the man first. No one else will have to say anything to him because he will see how you honor Yahuwah and live a pure life. Don't depend on things like fancy hairdos or gold jewelry or expensive clothes to make you look beautiful. Be beautiful in your heart by being gentle and quiet. This kind of beauty will last, and Yahuwah considers it very special. So all that temporary beauty you're putting on, listen, beauty fades. You ain't going to live like looking like this, like that for the rest of your life if that's what you think. I'm sorry, beauty fades. And what lasts is what's in your heart. So you can put all the makeup and all the coverings on all you want. The Bible says be gentle, ladies. Ephesians, uh, uh, let's see here. No, that's talking about kids. We still ain't on marriage because that's what he asked for. I got you, Doc. Stay with me. Oh. Ephesians 5 and 33 says, so each husband should love his wife. As much as he loves himself. Now, I can tell you right now that is a principle that I have tried to live by my whole life concerning my wife. Whether she feels it or believes it or any of that, that really don't matter to me. I know deep down in my heart what I feel. And when you give your life for your wife, that means you marry her, you honor her, and you honor her by how you take care of her. And if you look at my record, we can go to the book. We can go look at Minister Kimball's record. I have done at least that. And because of that, the Lord is going to bless me. So regardless of how I feel today or feel tomorrow, when my wife wants to use the car, she gets to use the car. When my wife asks to do this, she gets to do it. Why? Because the Bible commands it. Stop letting these people tell you what you want to hear. You're going to end up going to hell basing everything on what you want to hear. It's not about what you want to hear. What does the scripture say? So each husband should love his wife as much as he loves himself. And each woman, wife, should respect her husband. There we are again. Why does he keep talking about respect concerning the wives. Let me help you out. Because Eve did not respect Adam enough to listen to him. If you go back to the book of Genesis, you can go and try it because you ain't going to find it because I already studied it out. So when I tell you something, you can take it to the bank. But those of you that want to see if I'm wrong, go to the book of Genesis and look at the story. God never spoke to Eve. He never once told Eve anything. The first encounter that Eve had with Yahuwah was after they sinned. So that tells me that God commanded Adam not to touch the fruit. 
And Adam told his wife, and she got tricked by listening to somebody else. So wives, this is the point I'm making. When you put people in place over your husband, woe unto you. Look at what you women have to go through today because of Eve listening to the serpent. Listening to the serpent on the job. Listening to the serpent in the classroom. Listening to the serpent at the grocery store. When you listen to the serpent, you will get bit. It's an old fact. So the reality is he's saying that uh, a husband loves his wife. He shows love to himself. Okay? So the reality is I show love to myself when I love my wife. Whether she wants to receive the love or not, it's still my duty. Wise, whether you want to give up the, 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 the cookie jar or not, it's still your duty. Because we're going to get into that too because he asked for that. So we're going to put it all together tonight. I'm tired of y'all asking me and inboxing me these questions. And then you get upset when I read you the scripture. So here's the bottom line. We are going to separate our personal feelings anytime I record a video. And if you put something negative in my comments, you're going to get blocked. This is not up for this, a discussion. This is not a channel for you to air what you feel. I have a duty as a preacher and a man of God to teach the Bible the way it was intended to be taught. So the reality is, who cares how you feel? We are going to separate that because it's not about you. It's not about me. But he is the one who sets order in our lives. You wonder why your life is not in order? Take a look at your tree. Is there fruit in your life? Are you obeying and following some of the things that we're discussing tonight? Nine times out of ten, no. Because most wives do not respect their husbands. And most husbands do not honor their wives. Study that out for yourself. Most black folks... You can see it just by looking at how they degrade our women in the music videos. How the rapper, these the sorry rappers, there's millions and millions of dollars, but they can't even write a book. Can't even write a book, but making millions of dollars cussing out and dogging your daughters out. You study that one out for yourself. I never go see nobody like Lil Wayne or any of them niggas. I never go waste my time to see that. What? Go see somebody that's obviously demon possessed and you don't think that stuff affects you? Ephesians 5 21 says, Honor Christ and put others first. A wife should put her husband first as she does the Lord. A husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head and the Savior of the church which is his own body. So wives should always put her husbands first as the church puts Christ first. <coughs> Malachi chapter 2 verse 13 says, And what else are you doing? You cry noisily and flood the Lord's altar with your tears because he isn't pleased with your offerings. And refuses to accept them. This is where I got to stop right there. Because somebody needs to understand what's going on right now. I've been in church most of my life. And every time I step foot in a church, especially an African American church, we all seem to know when they're getting ready to talk about tithes and offering because they always go to the book of Malachi. You went and you robbed me. In my tithes and offering. That's the scripture that they hang it up on. Nobody ever talks about the entire chapter that talks about how upset and angry that God is with us because of divorce. Nobody talks about that. But they go right to, be, so before he even talks about tithes and offering, he spends time telling you that he doesn't even want to accept your offering. When the last time a church said that to you? They ain't said that because it speaks to 
judgment and your lifestyle. So he says, I don't even want to receive your offer. He says, and refuses to accept them. And why isn't God pleased? It's because he knows that each of you men have been unfaithful to the wife you married when you were young. So men, get it out your mind that it was biblical to have more than one wife. That's a lie from the pit of hell. If, if that was true, then he would not be specifically dealing with the wife of your youth. Now, look, I can tell you right now, I have been, been around, me and my wife have been around for a lot of years, okay? And so if anybody's the woman of my youth, the woman of my youth is the woman I'm married to. Now, I chose to marry that woman because that's the woman that I chose. So stop all this, uh, you put me with this person and God put us, no, God ain't did none of that. Stop it. He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. So there ain't not one person in scripture that God put together besides Adam and Eve. You study that out for yourself. So you women and men talking about, I don't know if God's supposed to. No, he honored it and he, he, he actually licensed it when you stood before him and all those witnesses and said that you would promise to love this person to the day you die. That's what you said. And he will make you eat those words. So at the end of the day, don't play with Yahuwah. Don't play with him. The scripture is clear. He says he knows that you have been unfaithful to the wife you married. So you brothers out there slipping and diving and shucking and diving and putting your peace out there in areas that shouldn't be. Woe unto you. He says unfaithful. God is not okay with adultery. I don't care who told you that. I don't care what the basketball holes told you. I don't care what they told you on lifetime. God is not okay with adultery. And that blood is on your children's hands and you don't even realize it. He says you promised that she would be your partner. But now you have broken that promise. Didn't Yahuwah create you and your wife to become like one person? And why did he do this? It was so that you would have children and then lead them to become Yahuwah's people. Don't ever be unfaithful to your wife. The Lord God all-powerful of Israel hates anyone who is cruel enough to divorce his wife. That settles it right there. Now, if you want to be upset with me about that, I don't care. Take it over him. Don't get upset with me. Pull your Bible out and read it. That's what we just read. I didn't put them words in there. So all these people saying, yeah, you can be repentant. Well, woe unto you because the minute that you slip in and slide up in somebody else that ain't your spouse, what if you crack the sky and you didn't get a chance to repent? That's the only one talk about that. Nobody want to say nothing about that. That's where everybody get quiet. And everybody church mouths. People start talking in tongues now. Everybody won't get in heavenly language when you start talking like that. But it's the truth. It's the truth. Whether you like it or not, it's the truth. So before he starts talking about the acceptable tithe, he spends way more time rebuking. And just remember, I didn't write this. I just teach it. We're not done yet, y'all. I know y'all y'all, y'all squirming, and, and I know y'all mad at some of the things we talked about tonight, but uh, the beautiful thing is I don't never get on here and tell you what I feel. We read this scripture, and then I get off. So when I leave you with the scripture, then it's up to you to go before the Lord and ask him to give you understanding. I have the understanding. I'm the teacher. So at the end of the day, whether you listen to me or not, I know because I've studied. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. All right. We're almost there. I'm almost at the end of this thing here. Ah, Ephesians 5.33 says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. So once again, husbands, 
you out with that side piece, midnight tap, you are not honoring yourself. I don't care what they told you. You are not honoring yourself. Because if you were, you would not be committing adultery. So I'm speaking to male and female tonight. If you living in that lifestyle, you better repent and repent fast. Because the number one covenant that you made before the Lord, you broke it. Forget how you made your spouse feel. What about what you told God? Ephesians 5, 31 says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. So that takes out kids. That takes out your mama, your daddy, your relatives. I don't care, because women are the ones that like to say that. No, it does not mean your kids come first. That is dysfunction. That is not what the scripture says. Ephesians 5, 28 says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever yet hates his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it. Don't we do that? Oh, yeah, we got to go somewhere. We get all cleaned up. We, Oh, shoot, I can get in the bathroom and put on a suit jacket and put on one of my hats and get my jewelry on and matching shoes and think I'm just the cat's meow and the dog's bow wow. The reality is, you do that all for yourself, but the reality is, you nourish and cherish yourself like the Lord did his church, because we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. You are not your own. Ephesians 5, 25, or 5, 25 and 27 says, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And he gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. This is why, husbands, you must stay in the word. How are you going to wash your wife with the word if you don't want to read it? Don't blame it on her. Don't have the Adam and Eve spirit. Lord, it's this woman you gave me. No, you get the Bible out. You read it. You are the head of that household. Don't let her or any of her family or anybody else tell you anything different. According to the scripture, you are the priest of that home. So you have an obligation to read the word so you can wash your wife with the water of it. Ephesians 5.23 For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. I'm going to stop right there because I don't like that part where it says he is the savior of the body. Because we got to understand when you get married, you save each other. So here's the reality. I look back over my life and I've been married I don't know, 19 years, 18 years, somewhere in there. Back in 2004, we got married. And the reality of it is if we didn't do nothing else right in our life. God is going to honor us and bless our children because we did not stay in habitual fornication. And we, the only sin that affects your body is the sin of sexual immorality. So any sex with anybody outside of a covenant with a husband and a wife, you are bringing damnation on your life and your kids. Don't make me have to go to that scripture and pull it out where he said, I punish sin up to four generations. So when you look at it that way, keep on thinking you're having a ball. And when you see your child is suffering, or maybe your child is the one, the next one that is being kneed down by the police, you this is the consequence for sin. First Corinthians 7 and 4 says, the wife has not power of her own body. Whoa, I know I didn't really hear. I'm going to probably lose some fans tonight. Y'all going to probably, 
I, I know I'm going to look back tomorrow and I ain't going to have as many people follow me no more after that statement. But like I said, I didn't say it. So you be mad at me all you want. The Bible says the wife has not the power of her own body. So you can stop saying, oh, I can get an abortion. It's my choice. No, it's not. That's a curse that you brought on yourself. Because that baby, you sacrificed to the de the demon Malek. If Adam, or not Adam, but Abel and Cain, the Bible said that Abel's blood cried out. The innocent blood cried out from the earth to Yahuwah. What do you think 50 million babies sound like? African-American women have the highest rates of it. Nobody's dealing with it. Nobody wants to talk about it. Oh, I just get a Plan B bill. You still come abort the baby. Whether you're getting a Plan B bill, whether you're using some kind of contraception, whatever you're doing, it's still abortion. Why? Because Jeremiah said that I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. So that means that at the time that that baby is contracepted, it has became a human life that you murdered. Thou shalt not murder. Woe unto you. It says, wife has not the power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also, the husband has not the power of his own body, but the wife. So this is why when somebody asked me the other day, he said, well, there's not anything in the Bible that talks about masturbation. And I said, well, listen, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed to talk about the sin and things that I've got delivered from. I've stumbled, I've had my faults in my past. And that was my same thing. I ain't out here physically doing nothing. Well, here's the reality. I'm going to break it down for some of y'all. And this is what's going to make you understand why it's important. That you and your spouse regularly do what the Lord puts you here to do. Because if you don't, there's, a, there's some things that happen because of it. Here we go. This is your scripture, Doc. You asked for it, so here it is. The wife has not the power of her own body but the husband. And likewise, also the husband has not the power of his own body but the wife. He says, defraud not one the other except it be with consent for time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. Now listen, they said that before in church. I've heard that scripture. That's the King James. Everybody know that. Well, let's get into a different uh, 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 translation. And, and see, that's how I'm able to understand the word. As I read it from every angle I can, because that, that sounds real pretty and, and, and nice and and, and, and kumbaya and, 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 and you know, some, some, some dumplings and rice right there. Well, let's just see what it says in a different translation. Because that translation I've heard since I was, what, eight years old? Eight years old? That's what I heard. I, I heard it at least since then. So here's the other translation that kind of stuck out to me when I was studying on marriage about a year ago. He says... A wife belongs to her husband instead of to herself. So why are stopping with this? It's all about me. Well, if it's all about you, then you need to get away from the man. Go be single and see how it works out. That's what I told this dude today. I said, go tell her to get out there and see what's out there. Go on and see. You washed up and got six kids. I'm sure you ain't going to keep your beauty that long. He know who I'm talking to. <laughs> I ain't saying no names, so I guess I can say whatever I want on my show. <laughs> so he says, and a husband belongs to his wife instead of to himself. So don't refuse sex to each other unless you agree not to have sex for a little while in order to spend time in prayer. Then Satan won't be able to tempt you because of the lack of your self-control. So here's the reality. When we do not come together with our, our spouses like we're supposed to, that's when the enemy sends tricks. He sends temptation of pornography. He sends temptation of other people. He sends temptation of other things. And you find yourself doing stuff that you know 
God is not okay with, but you made yourself feel like it's all right. No, it's wrong. You need to repent. First Corinthians 7 and 10 says, I instruct married couples to stay together. And that is exactly what the Lord himself taught. A wife who leaves her husband should either stay single or go back to her husband. And a husband should not leave his wife. That pretty much sums up divorce. So all of y'all sitting out here saying is they got a, a Christian group uh, where I guess men and women uh, that are married, I've seen this today, they got a group where if they get divorced, then the, the divorced people can get in this group and link up with somebody else. And all of this is going on in the house of God. Ain't nobody saying nothing. The final days in church of Laodicea is what we are upon. We are definitely in the last days. 1 Corinthians 7 and 2 says, Well, having your own husband or wife should keep you from doing something immoral. That's what you got a wife for. That's what you got a husband for. I don't care if you're he, too mad to talk to him. You married him. Talk to him. Talk to her. You married them. So what? They made you mad. They're going to make you mad some more. You probably make them mad too. Bible says, be angry but sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So that means by 7 o'clock when the sun is setting, whatever I'm mad about, I better give it to the Lord. This is the last scripture that we are going to finish this thing up for the night. I hope I was able to help somebody because, again, marriage is the way of the Lord. You will always hear that out of this minister's mouth. I don't care what. You also have heard me say before, people would probably talk major stuff about me because let's, if my wife was to divorce me, three, four months later, you'd be seeing me with somebody else. Not because I've been doing something prior. I don't mess with women. Women know out the gate that I have a queen at home. And I always honor my... Y'all can look at my pages and see that. I ain't got to tell y'all. Y'all can go to all one of these Facebooks and Twitters and everything else, and you will see pictures of me honoring my wife. She's everywhere. So there's not no hitting of what I'm doing here. What I'm trying to bring to pass to you all is we must understand that regardless of how we feel, marriage is the first institution of following the way of the Lord. I am Minister ML. Please like the video, share the video, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Be blessed.